Welcome back to another video. My name is Gareth from Park Cameras, as it always is, and today we're going to talk about how to capture movement and speed when photographing fast moving subjects. We're talking about panning. It's Tutorial Tuesday. Oh no, wait, that's the end of the thing. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each other week, each and every Tuesday, we bring you a brand new, fresh photography tutorial. This week is no different. We're talking about panning photography, which essentially is a great way to capture movement and speed when photographing a fast moving subject. Now, I recently got the chance to go to Goodwood Festival of Speed, where I was able to photograph lots of fast moving subjects, mostly, of course, cars and motorbikes, but it gave me a great opportunity to get lots of content for this exact tutorial, which I've been wanting to do for a long, long time. This is such an interesting way of kind of photographing things. It's a little bit like long exposure, but there's a lot of movement. You're trying to keep some things very sharp. You're trying to blur other parts of the photo. So there's a lot of things to kind of take into account here. So if you look at photos like this one or like this one, we're essentially trying to photograph the car, the motorbike or anything else that's moving very fast, keeping the subject sharp but blurring that background with a, essentially a directional blur, which we're achieving by moving the camera reasonably fast with a reasonably slow shutter speed. That shows that the subject, whatever it is, the motorbike, the car, whatever it might be, is moving very quickly and it captures a sense of speed within the photo. Now, of course, the main thing we're gonna be looking at here to achieve this is shutter speed. If you've ever been like me and when you start out taking photos, and especially if you try to take a photo of a moving, a very fast moving subject, let's say a car, you might bump that shutter speed really high. This is certainly what I did the first few times, one one thousandth of a second, one two thousandth of a second. You get it nice and sharp, you freeze that motion, but it almost looks like the car is stationary on the road. You don't get any sense of speed or movement. And especially with a, with a fast moving subject, that's kind of a shame. It kind of robs the photo of something which should have been in there. So this is a great way of capturing that. Now it is just worth mentioning, just while I'm here, I'm editing the video, there is a time and a place for using a fast shutter speed to capture motion. You know, if the car is kicking up water or dust or dirt or anything at all, actually using a really fast shutter speed will freeze that and create a really dramatic photo. So there's definitely a place for fast shutter speed photography when it comes to photographing cars and stuff like that, and actually still capturing a sense of motion and speed, but we're gonna talk about how you can get that really nice blurred panning effect and really get a sense of the speed. Now, what are we gonna be doing? Well, we're gonna be setting our shutter speed to something pretty slow. I usually start out somewhere around 1 50th of a second, 1 60th of a second, and then I adjust it up and down from there to where I kind of need it to be to achieve the right look for the photo. I don't like to go much lower than sort of 1 25th, 1 10th of a second really at the most, and I don't tend to go much higher than 1 100th, or really in some situations I've gone up to about 1 1 60th of a second. But that's really just to make sure I was getting some sharpness in the photo. What we're gonna do after we've set our shutter speed to a nice slow shutter speed, let's go with 1 60th of a second, we are gonna set ourselves up in a position where we can see our fast moving subjects, so a car, motorbike, whatever it might be, moving along the road. We're gonna try and match the speed of that vehicle with our camera and lens. So we're gonna set ourselves up to point the lens at the camera. So we're gonna set ourselves up to point the lens at the subject and we are gonna follow it. And we're gonna try and match the speed as perfectly as we possibly can. Set your camera to continuous shooting and get a, just a burst of shots. You know, 20, 30 shots, it doesn't matter. Just shoot away, trying to match that speed. And what's gonna happen, if you manage to match the speed perfectly, is you're gonna get the subject to be nice and sharp, but the background is gonna get really blurred out with, that, like I said before, like that directional blur, which just adds in that sense of movement and speed. Now, that's great, sounds straightforward but it's a little bit more tricky than it kind of sounds on paper. Matching that speed can be very difficult and that's why you wanna do continuous shooting to try and get at least one or two of the shots to be nice and sharp. The best thing to do, at least for me, is to set a focus point on the screen and try and keep one part of the vehicle on that focus point. That helps me to actually keep the frame the same around the subject, but just move it 
following that subject. Now there's gonna be a lot of failed shots. Every single time that I do it, I'll always get loads of, of failed shots because it's kind of a difficult thing to do. It's not the kind of thing where you're gonna get every time a perfect shot, but if you keep at it, you keep practicing, and you use that continuous shooting, you will get those shots that work perfectly. The great thing about this is it creates a sense of separation between the subject and the background. You don't have to use a particularly fast aperture either. Because you're letting in so much light with the slower shutter speed, you can stop that aperture down, f5.6, even f8, something like that, because you're letting in so much light with the shutter speed. Now, what's really nice about this as well is because you are letting in so much light, it works particularly well in lower light scenarios as well, which can be fantastic for capturing light trails and stuff like that in the background, which looks really, really nice. Something to keep in mind with this kind of photography is your background, which might sound kind of ridiculous since you're gonna be blurring it out, but different backgrounds will blur out in different ways. You might wanna think about things like color. You know, what is the color of the background? How does that kind of work with the color of the subject? Is it gonna make it pop? Is it a dark background? Is it a very bright background? These are things to keep in mind. You wanna have, in an ideal world, an interesting enough background that it looks good blurred, but not completely taking focus in the image. So for example, a very bright background might not be ideal because it might steal focus away from the subject. A very dark background is similarly probably not gonna work that well because it's not gonna, it's not gonna show much in terms of blur. So you might want some color, you might want some shapes which can actually be blurred out. Some small lights work really well because you get light trails. Some lines can work fantastically or, or, or even just graphics on a board behind, something like that can blur very nicely and create a nice long blurred line. Trees, of course, look great. You know, they're a little bit darker usually than the subject you're taking the photo of, but you can still make out some detail, which is good to then blur that with that directional blur. So definitely keep in mind the background. If you can, position yourself in a way where you actually control what is gonna be the background of the shot. And then it really comes down to a little bit of trial and error. So like I say, I start about 1 60th of a second, 1 50th of a second, but I'll move that shutter speed around a little bit till I get the look I want to go for. If I go too low, it's just gonna get too blurry and it's not gonna look good. If I go too high, there's not gonna be enough blur in the background. So I like to kind of move it around a bit depending on my focal length. Now, I use, generally speaking, the equivalent of a full frame 70 to 200 for shots like this. So I was with Fujifilm at Goodwood Festival of Speed. I was testing out a few of their different lenses. I used the 150 to 600, which was a beautiful lens. We'll have a review on that soon. But I also used the equivalent of what would be a roughly a 70 to 200 as a full frame. Links down in the description for all these lenses as well. That, for me, gave me the best trade-off for focal length and allowed me to use the right kind of shutter speed. So the longer your lens, the faster your shutter speed can be and still get some nice blur. Because the longer your lens, the longer your focal length, the more your background's gonna blur as you're moving, the less kind of background, I suppose, you have in the shot. Whereas the wider your lens, the more of the scene you're capturing, and you're gonna probably have less blur, so you might wanna even bring that shutter speed even further down. But for me, a 70 to 200, is about perfect for this kind of photography. So that's kind of a basic overview of how to start getting into this panning shot. Now, of course, it's great for cars and motorbikes and vehicles and all that kind of stuff, but you can absolutely do this for things like wildlife. There's lots of things you can actually do this for. So I'd love to hear it if you've ever tried this before, if you have any tips for people as well that we've not covered in this video, anything that you've tried out. Let me know down in the comments. I love hearing all of your suggestions and all of your lovely comments. I read every single one, so absolutely, that'd be great. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Like I say, links in the description for all of the different things that we've been talking about, the different lenses used for these photos, this video, all that kind of stuff. I'll see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.